morning. Welcome to Salem Bible Church, August 25th. Let's start out with number 572. Blessed as your... <laughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture, not first than my sight. Angels descending, break from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. open in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your assurance that you give to us through our salvation that we've gotten through your sacrifice for us. Thank you for that. Thank you for this morning where we can gather together, hear your word, sing songs of praise to you, and worship you. Just pray you'll bless us, be with us through this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let's turn to Pass Me Not. 489. Trusting only in thy spirit, 
Fathers, now I call. Uh, pastor's home, um, still cramping quite a bit, so pray for that, because it's uh, inhibiting him getting around, I'm sure, like he needs to get around. So be praying for him, that he'll continue to heal, and that the pains will subside some, and he can get mobility. Um, I know, John, when is your surgery? Okay, you and Raymond are both having surgery that day. Raymond's his shoulder, I believe, and yours is your spine, right? Your back. It's way worse than mine. <laughs> it doesn't sound that way. <laughs> yeah. So be praying for both those guys, John and Ray. God will be with them. How's your daughter in law doing? Doing fine. She's going through her third treatment this last week. Good. And uh, just one walk in about three weeks, so she's uh, learning to recover well. Oh, good. And that's Liz, right? Liz. Yeah, okay. All right. I pray for my father. He's, he's really having, he's, he's now had trouble swallowing. He's lost some pounds. Ooh. And uh, they, they think it's like early on some Parkinson's now because of the trouble swallowing. Uh -huh. So they're trying to figure out everything. He's just in a rough, rough place. Sorry, Tony. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Marty. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Anyone else? Well, let's pray. I'll try to remember. <laughs> Dear Lord, we just thank you for a time we can gather as, as believers, family together. And we do uphold these requests. We pray for Pastor. Lord, we thank you that the surgery seems to have gone well. We just pray that these pain issues will subside some so that he can get mobility and be on the road to recovery and make progress. Just to keep with him, encourage him, and lift him up, Lord. Pray for John and Ray with their surgeries coming up on the 29th. We just pray for both of them, Lord. Wisdom on the doctor's parts as they do their job and just that the right work will be done, that they will quickly heal and recover and find relief from the issues they're having. Pray for Marty, Lord. We just pray that you'd comfort her and her family with the loss of this sister and just know how much it affects us when we lose a loved one. And just pray that you'd lift them up, Lord, and that they might find their encouragement in you. Pray for Liz, Lord, that you continue to help her through her cancer treatments, That uh, we thank you that she seems to be handling it well. Just continue to uh, be with her and strengthen her through it. Um, may it do everything it's supposed to do, Lord, and just heal her body, Lord. And pray for Tony's dad, Lord. We just pray you strengthen him, uplift him, uplift the family too, and help them through this difficult time. Just pray for wisdom on what to do and what can help him. Just pray that you'd help the doctors to do things wisely. Thank you again for this morning where we can be together. Pray that if Brother William's going to make it to us today, we just pray that you keep him safe as he comes. And just thank you again for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn to number 151, a mighty fortress. <laughs> Amor 
Visiting us, Brother Williams. He made it. <laughs> we knew it. We had every page. <laughs> Let the church say amen. 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 God is good. And um, apparently there was a pretty bad accident, and so we had to come up seven mile road. Uh, we to to your, um, I like to go out of the story. But God is still good. He's still working things out. And I'm glad to say uh, this morning it's good to see my sisters and brothers. My sisters and brothers. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to get started and uh, we're going to be journeying through the book of Jude. Journey through the book of Jude. Jude does not get a lot of attention because it's such a small little book. But you know what? It's a powerful little book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, in the American military, we have that <coughs> M1 Abrams tank. That's a powerful tank. It does look a little innocent, but you know what? Our folks say this quite deadly, and they don't like to be around those powerful tanks, you know. But we thank God that uh, you are here because you know what? Each one of us has a powerful spirit. Each one of us, regardless of our age, 
our uh, place where we came from, you know? Everybody has a powerful little life. Amen? Amen. That being said, I want you to turn, and would you be so kind as to turn to the book of Jude. That's that little book right before Revelation. And we're going to focus in on verses 20 and 21. No chapters in Jude. Verse 20 and 21. And this is what it says. But ye, beloved, Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, eternal God, we thank you for watching over us last night as we slept. And then you woke us up with a finger of love. And you said, get up and get started on your way. Because I have some work for you to do. Father, thank you for watching over us as we slumbered and as we slept. Some did not sleep last night. We're thankful. Who stayed awake and on God during the night. We pray that you would bless them, that you would bless us also as we journey through these few verses in the book of Jude. It is in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. We do pray and ask it. Amen. Amen. A Jew uh, is a slave of Jesus Christ, and he says this in the first verse, but then he also says that um, James is his brother. James is the brother of Jesus, but if you notice how Jude phrased this, he deferred to his brother, well he deferred to Jesus first, and then to his brother, because everybody knew James, you see? And so that was his way of letting us know about the superiority of Christ Jesus. And so he begins building ourselves up in the faith. How do we build ourselves up in the faith? Well, I've got a few things to share. We can build ourselves up in the faith by studying to show that we ourselves are approved by God. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this, we realize that every day we are disciples or students of God's word. Every day. That's right. You never grow out of the school of Christ. Regardless of how old we get or how young we are, and we're never too young to study the love of Christ. Because God, he, he, he made us in his image. All of us were made in the image of God. The Greek would say, image de Dio, which is the image of God. And so that's why I can walk around in confidence wherever I go and know that I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. And you know, some places you go, are not the most uh, welcoming of places. Let the church say amen. 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 But in the confidence of the Lord, we walk, you walk, in the Lord. And so this is another point. In terms of building ourselves up in the faith, this is how we build ourselves up in the faith. Number one, we study to show ourselves approved. Number two, we are on missions every day. 
Every day we are on missions somewhere. Well, we can start with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors. Now you know <laughs> that your neighbors, they watch you. That's right. They watch you. They know about your kids. That's right. They know about um, your spouse. Mm -hmm. And maybe when it gets a little loud in the uh, house next door, you know, um, if you live close in proximity, but even if you live kind of far from each other, your neighbors know what's going on. And so our neighbors are our neighbors. That means that they too are brothers and sisters in Christ because they too are made in the image of God. And wherever you go in this old world, you know, whether you go to Japan or, or whether you go to South Africa or whether you go to England or whether you go to Russia, you know, wherever you go, we're all made in the image of God. And when I treat my brother or my sister wrong, guess what? The Lord is watching and shame on us because they do are made in the image of God. Brothers and sisters, don't let this fool you. Don't let this fool you. Look beyond this and look into the character and the uh, uh, fact that they too are loved by God, you know? And so this is part of growing in the Lord, building ourselves up in the faith. Now I'm not talking about, in this instance, I'm not talking about um, the faith that brought you to Christ in the sense of personal faith. I'm talking about the living faith as you walk, as you live, how you behave, what you say, what you think, the meditations of your heart, and what literally goes on when you meet somebody. Mm -hmm. What 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 things come out? They call it biases these days. What biases come out? And all of us have them. <laughs> all of us have them. I was talking to uh, uh, one individual. So I'm a chaplain at, at Ascension, and I was talking to one individual. I cannot say his name, obviously. And I was talking, and he said, uh, Chaplain. Do you think the Lord will forgive me? I said, well, forgive you of what? He says, there's something within me. I said, okay. In my own mind, I was saying, what is he going to say? <laughs> and you know what he said? He said, there is a beast within me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought about saying, well, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, my heart would not let me, um, uh, <laughs> my heart would not let me do that. And I said, well, you want to talk about it? He said, yes. And then he said, can you sit down? I said, oh, boy, this is going to be an interesting discussion here. And it was. He said, when you want to do good, Something just stops him from doing this. Mm -hmm. When he wants to say words that are right and whole, something prevents him from having empathy in that moment. And he said, I don't know what to do. Well, I said, brother, have you accepted the Lord? I'm just curious. He said, yes, I have. And then I said to him, well, there's an individual in the Bible named Paul. And he told me, I know Paul. I said, okay. Hmm. Well, Paul had this struggle too. The good that he would, sometimes he couldn't. And when he wanted to uh, show up and be uh, uh, faithful in the Lord, Something prevented him too. And it's the nature of the old man within all of us. So, to a point, all of us have this beast within. And sometimes it shows up. 
But you know what? You got to keep him in check. And the way that we keep him in check is by studying to show that we are approved unto the Lord and building ourselves up in the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And when you ask the Lord for patience, be careful what you're asking the Lord for. When you ask the Lord, Lord, give me a heart of love. Be careful. What you <laughs> be careful because when the test comes, you have the ability to pass the test. Amen. Or to fail the test. But, but the scriptures admonish us to build ourselves up in the Lord. To, not, to, not to break ourselves all down and get into a, 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 a situation where you know that uh, the Lord is shaking his head and saying, ah. <laughs> Thank God the Lord comes back and says, you know what? I'm a God of a second chance, a third chance, fourth chance, and you know what? Uh, all of us, all of us, all of us here, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all trying to become more like Christ. And so Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And I think Paul is a good, a good example in the Lord. Well, the scriptures goes on and says this, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost about what? Your faith. Pray about anything and everything. You know what? Sometimes I know when our children were, were coming up as kids, we say, would you like to pray? And sometimes they would say yes. And in their own little framework, they were praying to the Lord and maybe some would think their prayers elementary, but oh no, they meant just as much as our prayers as adults because the Lord is not biased in that sense. He's not biased, you know? And I think all of us know uh, how it feels when someone minimizes you and you say that's not fair. Well, it's happened in all of our lives. You know, for example, David, yeah, he was minimized by his brother, brothers, if you remember the story. Mm -hmm. Samuel came by and said, I want your sons to pass by me because one of them, uh, the Lord has some work to do. And of course, it started off with the oldest first. You all know, if you're the oldest brother or the oldest sister, you know, well, you gotta come this way first, you know. And so sure enough, mm -hmm, Jesse, David's father, paraded his sons in be before uh, Samuel. And Samuel said, nope, not him. Nope, not him. Nope, not him. Do you have any more sons? So yeah, we got a little fella out there. He's watching the sheep down in the sheep coop. And Samuel, well, bring him to me, you know. And so Samuel, being a young teenager, you know, walked by. He probably didn't know nothing much, you know, just walked by. And Samuel said, hold the phones. Yes, hold the phone. This little runt is the guy. Well, all the big brothers said, oh, what, is, what is Samuel talking about? Surely not, not David. Yeah. This guy is the one. And so not only was David chosen to uh, be, of course, the slayer of Goliath, but David was also gifted in music. Mm-hmm. You know, every time that evil spirit came by to buff its off, somebody would say, get David in here. Get him in here now, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And surely enough, they sent for David, and David would play on his heart. You know what? When you look at the inside of the piano here, it's actually an inverted heart, if you think about it. You know? 
I'm not going to put my hands in front of me. They face the streets. <laughs> I don't want the thing to fall down on me. But, but they would send for David. <laughs> David would play on his heart. And uh, David was soothed. Saul, even though Saul tried to kill him twice, mm -hmm. David respected Saul. David was a man of prayer. He believed in prayer. When we look at the 23rd Psalms, David wrote that psalm. Not only that psalm, but many other psalms. And of course, psalm simply means song in English. And so when you open up your Bible, usually cracked right in the middle like you learned at Vacation Bible School, you'll find out that all those psalms, many of them were written by David, and they are songs even today. One particular song, I remember this, uh, it goes like this. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I'll walk with him always. He leads me beside still water. I'll walk with him always, always, always. I'll walk with him always, always, always. I'll walk with him always. And that is just one song that we know taken from the Psalms. Of course, you know, if we were in Israel, it would obviously be different, but the meaning is the same. And so that's another way that we uh, build ourselves up in the faith. Why? Why do we want to build ourselves up in the faith? Because if the Lord is in your heart, he wants you to contend for the faith. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And so building ourselves up in the faith, praying in the Holy Spirit about anything, everything, all times of the day. Um, our Muslim folk, they pray mm, one, two, three, four, maybe four to six times a day. And th that's them. But as believers, we can pray any time of the day, more than six times. As a matter of fact, we can make prayer our lives, you know, we can make it part of our lives, you know. Oh, Lord, and I know we do this. Lord, what's going to happen today? Well, that's a prayer. Mm-hmm. Lord, have mercy. That's a prayer for the believer. Oh, my God, or OMG. That is a prayer, you see. You see how the Holy Spirit flips the script? And when we think that we're saying words, no, those are prayers. Those are prayers. I was running down one of the streets in Detroit, and while I was running, I encountered a situation with uh, two guys, and um, they came from behind um, a corner, I guess it was a corner, and one of the guys had a, the other guy was behind me. I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought um, that, um, well, I didn't know what to think, really. I really didn't know. But in my heart, I said, oh, Lord. That was a prayer, obviously. <laughs> that was a prayer. And so <clears throat> uh, the one that had the, fired the gun into my side. But you know what? The Lord heard my prayer. There was no boom. There was no bullet. I looked back up at the guy as if this, well, I was just shocked. I was in shock. I knew that the Lord delivered me. I knew that. But I thought the guy was going to turn the butt of the gun and, and hit me on my forehead. But he didn't. I looked him in his eyes, and his eyes were as big as Kennedy half dollars. <laughs> the guy behind, I don't know what he was doing back there, you know. But just as quick as they appeared, they disappeared just like that. And I turned, 
I whirled out into the middle of the street and almost got hit by a car, you know, <laughs> after all of that, you know. But the Lord delivers us. And so when we pray, things do happen. Things uh, do happen. And so the Lord wants us to pray about anything and everything because by prayer, it transforms our lives into something that the Holy Spirit can use and answer in that specific moment, in that specific uh, time period, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit, he hears our prayers. And I don't even like to use the word term records. The Lord is beyond recording things, you know. He hears our prayers instantaneously, whatever they are. And he'll either say yes, no, or just be still. Yes, no, or be still. And you all remember, Paul asked the Lord to remove the thorn uh, from his side, whatever that was. And the Lord told him, no, thrice. One, two, three. Yeah, thrice. The Lord said no. And so sometimes when we pray, if the answer is no or wait, just be still and know that I am God. And besides me, saith the Lord, there is no other. And so you're stuck with my answers. But that's okay. We remember, we remember our moms and our dads, they told us no. Oh, dad, I, I, I just love that 1946 Ford, uh, whatever. I asked my dad to buy me a Riviera, you know, the Riviera with the sweet back rear. I said, Dad, I want that car. My dad said, no. But Dad, I tell you what, if you front me the first thousand, I'll pay the 500. <laughs> he still said no. <laughs> but I really wanted that, that, that metallic green. Y'all remember metallic green? I really wanted it. And so he still said no. And so I said, OK. All right, I'm gonna go on and graduate from high school and get a job, and then I can buy my own vehicle. And I did. But we're not unfamiliar with being told no. And you know what? I want us to know that that's okay. That's okay. We've had to tell our children and grandchildren, and still do tell them, no. And they may put up a hissy fit. Oh, 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 I want. The answer is still no. When you go to the supermarkets and you see the kids acting up, people walk by. Mm. <laughs> they forget, though, that they were once a kid and that they had kids or grandkids. And guess what? They did the same thing. So <laughs> don't look as if you don't know as you walk past. Offer a blessing. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Instead, what's wrong with that child? What's wrong with that kid? That kid has no couth. Well, he's just a kid. <laughs> just a kid. And so by praying, the Lord is able to, to guide us, to lead us, and to help us because we want his will to be done. Mm -hmm. Some of you all may know this prayer. This prayer is prayed many times throughout America and throughout other places in the world. It is the model prayer. I'm gonna say it and then you all can repeat it if you want to, you don't have to, but it's good spiritual exercise because I know that you want to build yourself up in the faith. And this is one way to do it, by prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us 
from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That is part of our faith. That is part of mm, keeping the faith. Because when we keep the faith, we also remember the songs that we sing. We remember the testimonies that we heard. The Sunday school lessons that were taught. The lessons that we, and the testings that we went through in life to realize that the Lord is sovereign. He is sovereign and he's able to deliver us in real time and in this old world that we live. And so we learn also that we must keep the faith and we keep the faith by practicing the faith. And that's why we're here today. You know, we want to uh, build ourselves up in the Lord. We want to have spiritual strong muscles, you know, spiritual strong muscles in the faith. And you know what? Um, girls can have this. Boys can have this. Men can have this. And women can have this. We can all flex our spiritual muscles, and then teach our children to do the same. Why? Because this must continue until either we pass on the glory or the Lord will come. Mm -hmm. We gain eternal life. As we live, we work it out in fear and trembling, and then we say, Lord, if you take me away from here today, amen. However, Lord, whatever you do, whatever you do, according to the scriptures, we know that you will return. And there's a term in the Bible called Maranatha. That means the Lord's return and he's returning soon. Amen. When you see that term, Maranatha, pertaining to the Lord's return. And all this makes up some of the foundation of our faith. Uh, Brother Robert, where, where is the cornerstone on this facility? It's a sign, it's on the front. It's a sign, okay. 1886. 1886, that's right, that's right. And um, when we look at that sign, we know that the cornerstone is there. And you know what the cornerstone does? It brings everything together. The cornerstone is usually that first stone that is laid. And brothers and sisters, I want us to know that Jesus Christ is our cornerstone on everything. If, if you are in the 11th or 12th grade or even going to college and you're in competition, whether you are uh, wrestling or playing volleyball or field hockey, football, basketball, soccer, whatever, you know that that team, that team is critically important because the coach is the cornerstone. Everything begins with the coach. If the coach wants to draw up a, a play, it's his play to draw up. All we have to do is work out the play, whatever it is, just work out the play. If you sow, then you know that you have a pattern, but the pattern begins with something and you have to make sure that the pattern fits whatever it is you want to do. But sometimes you don't know what the pattern is, but in time, as you begin to sow, something begins to take shape. And based on that shape, guess what? You can put additional things on and before you know it, there's a dress for your granddaughter or there's a pair of pants for your grandson. But you didn't know it was gonna come out like this until you actually started doing the nuts and the bolts of, of patterning it, getting the right pattern, getting the right material, having the right needles, and putting those things in place. And then of course, afterwards, what a beautiful garment. And as we keep the faith in the Lord, guess what? The Lord is making for us, in us, a beautiful garment or pattern or, or, or individual 
God is shaping and God is making. And every day that we live our lives, you know what? The Lord is shaping us and prepping us and allowing us to be whatever it is he wants us to be. And brothers and sisters, as I go and sit down, you know what? I just want you to know this last point. All of us are in play. God is shaping all of us. And so husbands, love your wives. The Lord loves it when we as husbands love our wives. You know, when, 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 when we open the door up for our wives, when we decide that we're going to clean up the kitchen. That's right. Y'all say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. amen. The Lord loves that because the Lord is not biased. <laughs> He's not biased, you know. And I want us to know this is a new reality that we as ministers, preachers, deacons, evangelists, uh, um, and whatever else, we have to teach it like the Holy Book says it. We have to live according to the scriptures. Now, if you believe that, can you say amen? amen. Oh, say it one more time. Amen. And forgive the hell, say it one more time. Amen. amen. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you, Brother Kevin. <laughs> Just play it. Let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you so much for how you do work in our lives and the protection often that we don't even know you're doing for us. And we just pray that we would be willing and obedient servants, always being willing to grow, to learn more, to reaching out to others, to be that example we need to be uh, presenting Christ through our lives to them. Just pray you bless us as we go. Bless us as we come together again this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody.